Well, hello and welcome. Good Monday afternoon. As I always like to say, Monday's a great day. Some people don't like Mondays. Pardon me while I adjust my volume here, but uh, some people go Monday. Oh, Monday. But it's a day where I get to talk with some great people uh, doing my show here every week. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'm your host, David Burroughs, as always. And like I say, uh, some exciting guests coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about them. Three guests is coming up here in just a moment. And Michael Marinero is going to join us here, world figure skating champion. He'll be talking with us. Jeff Dale will be joining us to talk about Captain Kid Days. And my friend Domingos Fernandez, who's going to talk about his battle with multiple sclerosis for uh, the past 17, coming up on 17 years, and how he stays positive. But first, some other things that we need to talk about. Uh, here happening in the Sarnia Lambton community. Well, the Sarnia Sting, if you're a follower, you already know that that has passed. Uh, they they did their best against Saginaw in the first round of playoffs. Getting there was quite a battle. One thing I can say about this team is whatever happened all year long, they gave a great, strong effort, and they had a no-quit attitude all season. Going overtime with Saginaw, was certainly no easy task. Nothing to be ashamed of there. So congratulations to the Sarnia Sting for getting as far as they have. And uh, I know they're still doing some things out in the community, and they want to say thank you to Sarnia Lampton for all of their support, their fan support, their sponsor support, and all of you who showed up to the 35 home games that happened this year. Already some things in the works for next year, of course. You can still follow along with some of the OHL hockey action on their website and be sure to stay following throughout the summer months, sarniasting.com for updates of what's happening with them. All right. Well, you've heard me talking about this every week. There's a reason. One, uh, I'm the MC, so I, I want to talk about it because I'm really excited. Uh, and it is just such a great, awesome event. Sarnia Sings, Volume 3, um, Mental Health Awareness, Suicide prevention it is the well volume three as i say part three the third year for this fantastic event that adam dumont from royal lepage put together a few years ago and it's caught on huge the first year there were only 10 seats that were not sold for this event at the imperial theater last year sold out i just went to the imperial theater website at imperialtheater.net there's just under 100 tickets left in a 610 seat theater for Sarnia Sings. Max Major from K106.3 is gonna be singing this year. Michael Van Hevel has joined us and there's some other cool announcements. It's, uh, I wanna say, I wanna say so bad, but Adam, I'm not allowed to say anything just yet, but it's gonna be really, really exciting. Yes, I'm teasing. Go to imperialtheater.net to get your tickets for Sarnia Sings volume three. It's happening on Thursday, May the 2nd, at the Imperial Theater. More exciting things happening. If you haven't heard yet, what are you doing? You're not paying attention. The tall ships are coming to Cernia in August. Not only the tall ships, but as a part of the tall ship celebration coming to Cernia, August 9th to the 11th, they've partnered up with Blue Water Border Fest and Artscape by the Bay. So an amazing event of tall ships coming to Cernia. Blue Water Border Fest who we will have Mark Perrin from Blue Water Border Fest to join us again soon. We'll be making some announcements of the bands. So soon. I, I am teasing. I know I'm teasing about a lot of things, but that's well, it's to get you to come back and watch again. <laughs> but keep your eye out for that. We're going to have some exciting announcements for Blue Water Border Fest and Artscape by the Bay, all partnering together with the city of Cerny, Tourism Cerny Lampton, and so many local sponsors, uh, Carpenters Union and Imperial uh Imperial Oil Site, both major sponsors for this as well. And we'll, uh, Rob Hardwood, the Director of Parks and Recreation, will also be joining us from time to time. We'll have some of the artists from Artscape joining us. And we might have some of the artists from Blue Water Border Fest joining us here too. So we're very excited. I will be there all weekend, August 9th to 11th, bringing you the behind the scenes things that you won't see, but you're still going to want to go online, get your tickets. Thousands of tickets have already been sold for this, uh, well, I guess an iconic event coming to Sarnia. Looking forward to that. All right. Well, if you want to travel the world, you don't have to go too far. You can head down to Lambton College tomorrow. Uh, the uh, uh, event is taking place at the Lambton College uh, Event Center. 
uh, and the hospitality group is putting this multicultural event. Let me give you a full screenshot. I got this multicultural event. It's a free event. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and goes to about one o'clock in the afternoon. And the public is welcome to come down this free admission event, win some prizes, have some fun and some multicultural food. Why not? So uh, looks delicious. I think I'll make it down there before my class tomorrow. So the hospitality uh, group invites you down to Lambton College Event Center. That's tomorrow, April the 2nd. Yes, today is April Fools. Did you know that? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a minute as well. United Way, Sarnia Lambton, always doing something to raise their uh, funds as they're not government funded. They are 100% funded by you, the donator. Of course, Dave Brown, Executive Director for United Way, joins us here once a month. He was here last week, joined us, and he talked about this event, the Spring Suds event for Sarnia Lambton, happening at the Refined Fool, the Midtown Refined Fool on London Road. And 15% of sales from Burger Rebellion and Refined Fool are all going to United Way, Sarnia Lambton, starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon till midnight on Wednesday. What an amazing event and a great way for uh, Burger Rebellion and Refined Fool to be given back to the community and um, to the United Way, where all money raised by United Way is staying right here in Sarnia Lamp. And I know that's an important factor for a lot of people, and Dave Brown mentions that. So uh, some spring suds. And Dave last week was talking about how they just moved their new office very conveniently around the corner from, I said, that's very convenient. You're just around the corner from, uh, refined Fool and Burger Rebellion now. So I know I'm going to stop by and check things out there. So we hope you will too. Once again, 15% of the sales going to United Way of Sarnia Lambton. Well, along with that, uh, can you believe April 1st Friday? It's April today. The time is just flying by. But First Friday means there's always lots of things going on downtown for you to get out and check out. Of course, you can do the walkabout. A lot of the places participating all the way down Christina Street and Front Street downtown. It really uh, makes things come to life downtown on this first Friday. We've got a great downtown area. And uh, Brother Leeds is going to be joining them at Cheeky Monkey. This is their first appearance uh, here in Sarnia, as uh, Marianne tells me. And they're just some old rock and roll. Uh, they take their, their, their learnings, I guess, from the Tragically Hip, the Black Crows, and some other similar to that. So get down there to Cheeky Monkey for First Friday. 7 to 9 p.m. is when they have the live entertainment there. Of course, there's no cover charge. And uh, you can always find lots of goodies, records, DVDs, and more down at the only local record store that I even know of around this area, Cheeky Monkey. And you can find out more uh, what's happening with that. Go to their website, CheekyMonkeySarnia.ca. This past weekend, uh, or this past Saturday night, I was happy to be the MC down at uh, Brownstones for the annual uh, March of Dimes, Rock for Dimes event that happened down at Brownstones. Thanks to Brownstones for offering up a space for this Rock for Dimes event. K106.3, Blue Water Power, Automax, and a whole list of others were uh, the sponsors for this event. And uh, K106 asked me if I would fill in for the night and uh, be the MC. There's myself and Dennis Allman who uh, comes down from London. He's a big part of what happens at the uh, March of Dimes Canada, they're now known as. And, of course, Dom Fernandez, uh, who we will be talking with a little bit later on. Uh, he is the chair for Sarnia Lampton March of Dimes. He'll be joining us to talk a little bit about that as well. So it was a great night. Thanks to all the bands uh, who did show up that night. We had me and Mr. Smith started things off. Circle the City, an independent band from Sarnia was there. Shelly Raston made the trip down from Strathroy to entertain us. It was great to see her. I hadn't seen her in a long time. Uh, KTG from Windsor was down. And Zephyr doing a great job to finish off the night there. Lots of money raised. I haven't heard the number yet, but uh, Dennis said that he will let me know when they've got the count in, and I'll be sure to, uh, to update everybody on that. So thanks to everybody uh, who came out and supported Rock for Dimes. We're already making plans for next year, so we'll be letting you know that pretty soon as well. All right. Well, skating fans, we're very, very excited to have a very special guest here. And if you are one of the figure skating fans, the many figure skating fans, you're really going to enjoy this next interview. And we're going to bring him on right now. He's just patiently waiting in our lobby. Michael Marinero, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. You're, you've been, uh, 
pretty busy fellow there for quite some time. Uh, are you enjoying some rest right at the moment now? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. I have another event, uh, World Team Trophy, a team event uh, in Japan next week. So I just got back from Japan uh, seven days ago, and I'm headed there in another seven days. So I was back in Canada for 14 days, back training pretty hard, and off to one more event to close out the season uh, next week uh, in Japan. Well, I guess that's uh, the the makings of a champion. I guess those are some of the sacrifices that a person has to make in order to to have the successes that you do. Yes, yes, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of commitment. It's a uh, it's, it's a full time job. Yeah. Well, congratulations uh, to you and Kirsten. Um, recently. Uh, you took seventh place at the World Figure Skating Champions. And and more notably, and I think this gets left out a little bit, but you actually took fifth place on the on the, the day before that for the short program. Is that right? Yes. Yes, we were in fifth and a little bit of a disappointing uh, performance there in the long program. Uh, dropped a couple places uh, to seventh. Wasn't exactly what we were looking for. But uh, luckily, we have one more shot to close out the season on a hopefully a little bit of a higher note uh, next week. Yeah. Now you, you take a look back at that and uh, I mean, no shortcomings really. I mean, obviously we always like to be uh, closer to the top of that list, but when things go wrong out there and they do, right. You know, if you have a fall or what, whatever you want to call that, how do you push through that to, to, to keep going? You know, I mean, obviously you have to keep going you have to finish the routine, but what goes on up top there that says keep going? Uh, in the mo it's obviously uh, very difficult to make a major mistake on uh, championship uh, ice. The uh, mistakes we're making are uh, split second uh, decisions, uh, millimeter millimeter mistakes uh, can cost uh, can cost huge. But uh, once we're out there and we're uh, in the zone, uh, we just keep going. It's it's uh, it's not even a thought. Uh, that uh, we made a mistake because we have to be so uh, laser focused and in the moment that uh, we don't really realize until the performance is over and at the end and then we can look back and see what we did well or not well but we have to just stay in the moment to be yeah. precise to continuing going through yeah well that's got to be hard i mean there's there's a lot of emotion that uh, leads up to the events and then of course the moment in time when you're out there um, emotion plays a big part in that. So that it's, it's gotta be difficult. I'm sure at times you, you say that laser focus, I like how you put that, but, uh, not always an easy task. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely uh, difficult, especially when, uh, we're training the whole year to do a four minute performance at the world championships. If, uh, half a second goes wrong, the whole thing is ruined. We don't get to get out there and do another shift or, have another run. It's uh, one shot, one go, and it takes uh, it takes a split second uh, to go either way, good or bad. Yeah, the support that you must have between the two of you. I mean, uh, I've you know I've read a lot of stories and watched a lot of the, the interviews, and uh, there's a real chemistry between uh, you and your partner Kirsten. Is it Kirsten or Kirsten? I want to get Kirsten. That right. Kirsten. Kirsten. Okay, I apologize, Kirsten, if she's watching. But there's a lot of there's a lot of chemistry between you two out there. How did that connection first come together for you guys? When did you know that? Wow, this is somebody that I really click with, and and this is going to work out there. Well, uh, after the uh, Sochi Olympics, uh, she was uh, in the Sochi Olympics. She uh, got a silver medal for Team Canada came home and uh, decided to uh, break it off uh, with her partner. Uh, she gave me a call. We uh, did a tryout. We skated for about three, four days, just trying to feel it out, see if it would be a good match. And at the end of the three, four days, we realized that uh, we had some potential and we could keep moving forward from there. Yeah, well, obviously that decision was a good decision because you've certainly had some uh, great success with it. And um, when that change came along too, did I, did I read there was like some, some coaching changes that happened for you as well? Yes, I was in uh, Strathroy at the time. I've been tr I was training there for about eight years and uh, she was located in Kitchener. So uh, when I teamed up with her, I made the move from Strathroy uh, to Kitchener. 
Wow. And again, that another uh, good decision that's obviously worked for you as well. How do you, how do skaters build that trust between each other? Because there's a lot of handling going on out there um, from, from being really close to throwing people up in the air, if I can put it that way. Uh, how, how do you, is that part of the whole building the routine is, is building trust along the way as well? Yes, definitely. Trust is huge. Uh, without uh, trust, none of the moves we would be able to do. Starts out uh, pretty much like an arranged marriage. We're spending uh, seven, eight hours a day together. And so we're still building on that, working on the communication every day. But that's a huge, huge aspect, if not uh, even bigger than the physical aspect, is uh, our interactions with each other and our communications to be able to keep moving forward and to try and keep it long term and hopefully be on the world podium. Yeah. And what kind of things do you do to to build that trust? Like, is uh, uh, that just come with time or are there certain uh, uh, skills that you work at to build that or? Yes, uh, it mostly comes through time uh, with uh, spending uh, seven, eight hours a day together. We uh, get to know each other uh, pretty well, but we're also uh, do work with uh, mental uh, sports psychologist. Uh, they help us, give us tools, how to interact with each other and uh, how to get the most out of each other uh, so we can perform at our peak. Yeah, there's there's obviously, you must, there's a lot of conversations that go on be, between you and Kirsten. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm talking away from the coach, just the two of you to really, uh, well, like you say, it's almost like an arranged marriage. You have to build that relationship with each other. And, um those those moments have got to be uh, really powerful when you when you get that time to discuss routines uh, and that sort of thing. But do you do you guys have that personal relationship as well? Do you, do you talk about each other's families and whatnot? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, spending that much time together on and off the ice uh, would be pretty difficult uh, to make it work uh, if we didn't have a good relationship off the ice. So uh, luckily, we do. We uh, get along very well. And, uh, yeah, our uh, moments in between us is almost even uh, more important uh, than our coaching staff now at this level when we're out there on the ice at the World Championships uh, 30 seconds before our skate. Uh, coach sends us off the boards. Uh, it's more important uh, what we're saying to each other there in the final, uh, final 10, 15 seconds as we're hitting our starting pose uh, to get ready. I bet. And there's probably a mental conversation that's happening while you're out there performing when you look at each other, you just, you know what each other's thinking? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, the middle of the run through, we can uh, catch eye contact, even just by hand, by touching, by p way I put my hand on her shoulder, way I'm holding her hand, we're communicating the entire time. That's fantastic. Well, what a great chemistry, as I said, that's uh, it's working for you and you're, you're doing very well. Now for you, this started um, age two, Did I? Did, is that yes. correct? Yeah. And was that who was that that put the skates on you and said, "Well, you're you're going to skate"? Well, I have uh, two older brothers. They're about uh, seven and nine years older than me, so they were into all the sports uh, when I was two years old, just growing up. So I wanted to do everything they did: put on the rollerblades, try and rollerblade in the driveway, get on the ice, play hockey with them on the pond. Both of them did uh, learn to skate at the Point Edward Skating Club, then transitioned right away into hockey. I was expected to do the same thing. Uh, once I got into the learn to skate, though, I just fell in love. I don't know. I don't even remember it. I was uh, two, three years old, but I remember I just I, I couldn't get off the ice, and I just wanted to continue uh, continue skating and perform. And this has just become your life and your passion, and uh, not much has gotten in your way of stopping it, has it? Uh, there's definitely been uh, many, many hurdles along the way. It's been uh, a roller coaster ride, a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but uh, we need those uh, downs to teach us those uh, valuable lessons so that we can keep uh, climbing. When uh, we have success, there's a little bit of learning, but uh, we learn the most uh, through our failures. So like last week in, uh, in Japan at the World Championships didn't go uh, exactly as planned, but uh, ton and tons of learning experiences coming from there. So going into next week and even into next season and into the future, we're going to be stronger because of it. And uh, we're going to use it uh, to our advantage. 
Now, when you uh, and what a great way to think about things. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more on the you know failure way to success, right? Um, when you're picking a routine, uh, music obviously uh, plays a big and uh, it's a real attachment to the routine, right? Uh, how do you come up with that? Every skater is different. Some uh, some athletes have full 100% control over uh, what they're doing. But uh, with me and Kirsten, we kind of trust the guidance of our coaches and our choreographer here in uh, Montreal. She uh, has guided us uh, pretty well throughout the last uh, three, four years. So she usually comes to us with about three, four, uh, three, four pieces. And we talk together as a group and narrow it down and pick the one that we think is going to be uh, the most beneficial. Right. Now, going back to Japan, uh, do you use the same routine or is this a whole new routine that uh, the audience is going to see? Yes, this will be uh, the same routine. Uh, for our competitive programs throughout the season, we will compete uh, from September till April. We have two programs, the short program and the long program, and uh, they will be tweaked and be changing all year long, but it will be the same piece uh, all the way throughout. So this will be the last performance of uh, these two programs before uh, we get right back here to Montreal and we're gonna start uh, building the new ones probably four or five days after returning home. So it's gonna be a quick turnaround and no time wasted and we're gonna be right back at it building for next season already. Now is this uh, is this the Pink Floyd routine? Exactly, yes. Yeah, now that was, that was one that you had some trouble with, right? Yes. Yes. And 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 so when you come back to that now, that's that's got to be at the forefront of your mind. Was like, okay, at this point, uh, do you think about that? Do you, do you, you know, I got to get it right this time, obviously. But uh, is there it, was there a mistake made there before the audience actually sees what happened? Like, do you do you go through it that way? Uh, yeah. The I made a mistake on uh, one of the jumps, and so it's happening right from the entrance. Right before you even see me fall, two seconds before that, there's some minor uh, mistakes and adjustments happening. But that's uh, not a thought at all now. It's just focusing, staying present, and uh, being extremely aware of the body and what's going on so that I can successfully complete it uh, the next time. But there's no hesitation or uh, thought of the past because you have to be completely on point and present uh, to make it happen again. Any thoughts of the past, it's just going to, it's going to come up and happen again. So we just have to move forward and continue to build. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's really <laughs> like say Hakuna Matata, right? No worries. Exactly. Just the way, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but that, that, uh, those conversations, obviously you're reviewing that and, and, yeah. and, and through where all that happened, you know, like, uh, like any kind of sport. So all the best with that. I think uh, it's it's exciting uh, what you, yourself and your partner, Kirsten, have been able to accomplish. And certainly uh, lots of people around this area for sure, and I'm sure around Kirsten as well, are very, very proud of you. And and we're, we're happy to brag about you here in Sarnia area as well. Um, I, appreciate, I appreciate all the support uh, tremendously. I know uh, the Sarnia area has given me uh, – support more than I can even believe over the last uh, over my whole life but especially over the last couple of years and uh, a lot of the other athletes on uh, Team Canada they're even jealous of that they see that the GoFundMe page that uh, Sarnia raised to get my mother over there after breaking her pelvis to the Olympics last year it's uh, it's pretty special and it's uh, it doesn't go unnoticed yeah well that's uh that's for sure. Uh, great to have support. That that's kind of what helps push you through to that success as well. Let's talk about family for a little bit. You know, you're you're talking to us from Montreal right now. Um, how often do you get back to Sarnia in that area to uh, to see family? Uh, not too often anymore. Uh, not as often as I would like because it's a pretty busy schedule. Uh, once the season gets up and rolling, we're uh, competing, uh, traveling around the world uh, once or twice a month. And so there's not too much time to get home, but I try to get home for the major holidays you know, as much as I can, four or five times a year. Yeah, yeah. Now, in your spare time, I read um, you like to play cards. Yes, yes, I do. And skateboarding, is that right? And skateboarding, yes, yeah. Riding around, skateboard, bike outside, hiking. Uh, it's beautiful here in Montreal. There's always uh, something going on. So trying to get outdoors and keep busy. 
Yeah. Now, um, skateboarding, is that, uh, do you get like, do you, tr do you do tricks and stuff like that? Are you, are you fancy that way? Uh, I used to be fancy and get into the tricks, but now uh, the coaches put the stop to that. So now it's more just uh, leisure and uh, for traveling around. I have to keep uh, keep the fancy stuff to a minimum because uh, one little sprained ankle or anything like that, even if I'm off the ice for 24 hours, we don't have uh, 24 hours to lose. So, so not so much anymore, but uh, as I used to. I wondered about that. I was like, well, boy, you can't get too tricky out there because you wouldn't want to hurt yourself. But Exactly. Uh, uh, and if you do a couple of tricks, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> and cards, you play cards. Uh, we, can you tell us what game you like? Is it poker or is it yeah, I play uh, Texas Hold'em poker. It's uh, kind of a little bit of a family tradition. Played with my brothers all throughout my childhood. So it's a good little escape uh, away from sport, uh, turn the mind off and um, – just play some cards. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, are you any good? Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. I'm getting better. I'm studying. I'm studying and I'm learning. Yeah, I'm not that good. Sit down and let me teach you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and around where you where you are in Montreal, you you, you at least get a chance. I mean, obviously you're you're home for a short stint right now, but uh, you, you've made some good friendships. Uh, how long have you been down the Montreal way? I've been in Montreal for uh, four years now. And yes, we have a very close knit uh, skating uh, community and club here. We have athletes from all over the world. There's uh, Japanese pair champions, Canadian pair champions, uh, Korea, US, everywhere. And everybody is, uh, is away from home. So we're all uh, doing the same thing. So we kind of uh, make our own family when it's Thanksgiving here and we some people can't get home. We all get together and do our Thanksgiving dinner, and we kind of made a, made a little bit of a family here. Nice. A family away from family. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I know you've got to get going, but uh, there's there's a special event coming up that you, you wanted to share. Tell everybody what, what's happening with that. Uh, yes. Uh, in a couple months, the uh, Point Edward Skating Club will be holding an event, uh, Spring Skate for Mental Health. And it will be a uh, memorial slash fundraiser for Tamara Lumley and uh, the charity, which uh, some girls at the Point Edward Skating Club uh, started called uh, Talk for Tamara. It will be uh, May 19th, Sunday night from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena. Uh, tickets will be going on sale, uh, I think, at the end of the month on uh, ticketscene.ca. They'll be uh, $15, I believe. Uh, we'll include, there'll be a one hour show uh, with some local skaters and it will be followed by a one hour open skate and pizza. And it will also be the first time that uh, Kirsten and I will be uh, performing back in Sarnia in uh, I think about four years. So it's been a long time. So I'm excited uh, to get back to Sarnia and be able to perform uh, for all you guys that have given so much support over the last couple of years. So to say thank you and for a good, good charity and a good cause. Well, fantastic. We'll look forward to, uh, I already know my wife's going to want to go. <laughs> so I'll look forward to uh, coming down and seeing that performance. And uh, maybe we'll get a chance to uh, uh, meet in person. Maybe we can do something uh, behind the scenes in advance. And uh, send, send me a message, Michael, on uh, whoever's in charge of all of that. And we can, we can make sure we spread the word about it for sure. Definitely, for sure, we'll do. Well, all the best to you in your next competition, and then when that's done, we hope you get some time to relax and and uh, connect with some uh, family back this way and whatever, whatever you need to do to enjoy yourself. Uh, I really, really do uh, appreciate your time uh, coming on here and talking with us because uh, I, I know you have a busy schedule. Is there anything final you want to throw out there before I let you go? I just want to say uh, thanks for having me on, and uh, thank you to the whole community uh, for your support. Uh over the last couple of years, it's just been uh, tremendous. And I'm, I still don't even know what to say uh, for all the sport. Just thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to be going on to some some big things, hopefully, in the next uh, couple of years. All right. Well, fantastic. And uh, all the best to you and Kirsten once again. We'll look forward uh, to the results. We'll be talking about you around here for sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Michael Marinero uh, joining us. What a what a great joy to have him join us here, 
And going to be back in Sarnia. Look at that. Coming up in May, we'll be talking about that in the future as well. And on their way to Japan to go for it once again, I'm sure they've got a, a goal set to higher than where they were last time. Seventh in the world, though. That's pretty amazing. Fifth in the short program. Um, but a no-quit attitude there. You heard him talk a lot about all the things they go through to progress and the choices that they've made to get to where they're at. So thanks again, Michael. And Kirsten, if you're watching or listening, we wish you all the best as well. Keep Michael in mind there, will you? Okay. All right, moving on to my next guest. Uh, a bit of a change of plan here. Actually, my friend Dom is uh, ready. So Dom, I'm going to bring him on a little bit earlier than planned. And there he is. Dom, how you doing, buddy? Not bad, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah, long time no talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe a couple hours ago. Yeah, and we had a good time at the Rock for Dimes this past Saturday. Mm, that we did. Uh, the bands that I did get to see, they did an amazing job. Yeah, well, I know you had to uh, kind of skip out a little earlier than you would have liked to, but uh, yeah. it turned out well, and money was raised, and uh, lots of awareness for March of Dimes Canada, which offers a lot of uh, different uh, programs for, for people like yourself and many others. Uh, right. You've been fighting multiple cirrhosis, or MS as we'll call it, for close to 17 years now. Yeah, it'll be uh, 17 years this January. Yeah. Um, been in the wheelchair now since um, be 16 years this December. Yeah. It'll be uh, um, you and I have known each other about 23 years. And so long, you know, long before that uh, this disease attacked you. Right. And you've certainly had your obstacles along the way. I've witnessed it with you. But what's always been amazing to me is how you are still going. In fact, I got to say, honestly, uh, recently is probably the best I've seen you uh, in a long time as, as far as your health goes. And it seems to be ever since you started uh, speaking out and telling your story, public speaking, and um, you quit, uh, you changed some habits, right? Yeah. You, haven't, uh, you haven't been drinking uh, and your diet change and all that sort of stuff. What yeah. got to that point that said, I really got to make some changes here? Mm, with MS, you have to listen to your body. Um, uh, the reason for me quitting drinking was the fact that uh, it made me really sick the last time that I did drink, and uh, um, and my body just said, enough's enough, so quit. Uh, it's been uh, going on almost eight months now. Good for you. The other part of your and and and, I, and and we're talking here. We've already discussed a lot of this stuff, so I know I'm not bringing right. anything up that you don't want to talk about. But yeah, um, your mind is the forefront of all of you now, and and mm -hmm. again, we've talked a lot about your mindset and your way of thinking, your way of thinking about things, and 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 obviously, you know, when something tragic like this happens to somebody, I think most of us would think, I don't know what I would do. Um, but you really had to change the way you think up here, your mindset. Uh, you are one of the most positive people that I know, Dom, and it's it can't be an easy task. No, it's not. But um, you just have to, like with MS, you have to adapt to whatever it throws at, throws at you. So um, uh, I'm fortunate enough that I have not had a severe MS attack. And I'd say almost nine, eight, nine, ten months. And so um, uh, this rock for dimes. I'm, Sorry, go ahead. Um, this rock for this past rock for dimes is actually the first rock for dimes in the last four four years that I, I was not just getting out of the hospital to attend rock for dimes. Yeah, I remember that, and. Uh... You, you talk about uh, uh, an MS attack. Um, since since uh, it's attacked you, I should say, you've really educated yourself quite well. And can you explain to people 
like I think we say MS attack. Uh, they don't know what that means. What is an MS attack? Um, basically, an MS attack is is um, when uh, uh, the neurons and uh, your nerves, nerve endings in your brain uh, get demyelinated and um, uh, an exacerbation or an MS attack, if you will. Um, does occur, but um, uh, I notice uh, I can feel when something's coming on, um, especially if it uh, I start really feeling weak and uh, groggy and unable to uh, hold my head up. Um, I know something's wrong and it's uh, time to get uh, checked out. So uh, you just, um, you have to listen to your body. Yeah, and you, I know in a lot of our conversations, you said that a lot. And uh, recently, you made the decision to speak out or tell your story, and, and you wanted to do public speaking. Um, and it's something that's been on your mind for quite some time, but uh, there was somebody that inspired you to do that. Yes, our uh, mutual friend, uh, Dan Edwards, um, we've had a uh, couple chance meetings, uh, like I told you before, the uh, first time I, I met him was at a, at, at a tattoo parlor of all places. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and he seen me there and he uh, turned around, came back in, introduced himself and told us what he did. And uh it uh, just uh, reinvigorated me to want to get out there and put the word about MS out there because uh, the last few years, I've not heard much about uh, anyone talking about MS. So it needs to get out there. And you've been out there. Uh, the first uh, time you did a, a public uh, chat was at Rosewood Manor. And um, I, while it was just a small room, you you had yourself all planned out. You had your notes uh, in front of you or on your on your tablets, and uh, some family there to help you out. I, I was happy to come down and live stream that for you. And that video now has reached over five thousand views. You have to be really uh, proud, but I, I know you're excited because so many people you're spreading the word. You're having a positive impact out there. Right. Um, well, um, all the comments that I'd seen on that video, uh, I don't think I've uh, seen a single negative comment. Um, it's all positive, and, uh, and I definitely appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to actually sit there and view the video and uh, try and uh, pick up what, um, what I was saying, try to help people learn a little more about MS. Yeah. And you started a group called Talking MS, and that grow, has grown to just under 200 people right now, I think. I think about 160 people. And there's yeah. people in that group that you don't even know who they are. No, some people I don't know who they are. Um, some that I, I met through mutual friends that actually live uh, in the United States. Um, and I've had somebody uh, private message me asking me some questions um, um, about MS, and um, they were happy to uh, hear what I had to say. And um, uh, I, I'm always a listening ear. Well, you uh, you're good at that, and I, I check you made me an admin of the uh, the group there recently, and. I'm seeing where all these people are coming from. I think you're going to reach uh, a lot more people over time. You know, you just, uh, you're going live almost every day now. Is that right? Yeah, I'm trying to go live every day. Um, I really haven't been able to pick a perfect time where uh, people can view the live stream. Um, uh, as of late, it's usually around 1.30, but I'm thinking maybe a little bit later in the day. Well, here's here's one thing I can, I can tell you I've learned about live streaming. You go live when it is most convenient for you. Most of the views that you get come after the live is over. So it doesn't necessarily, I mean, if you want to have more live concurrent viewers, then maybe at a different time. But at the end of the day, you just want to get people watching. It doesn't really matter when they watch. So um, 
you do what works best for you is my experience. I mean, I'm here, we're here at three 30 in the afternoon, right? There's a lot of people still at work right. uh, not on Facebook, or at least they shouldn't be because their boss would get mad at them. But <laughs> yeah, most of the views come after the fact. So I think you just keep doing, you pick the time that works for you and make it consistent. And uh, you, you put a lot of things out there. Like you're, you're, you're in the group, you put out polls daily. You're asking people questions. Do you know, um, you're not just, you know, talking on the live stream. You're active in your group and you're educating people. Exactly. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I want people to know um, that uh, um, not only information about MS, but um, what is available to them, um, like funding-wise, if they should need equipment and, uh, and so forth. Um, but yeah, it just uh, it's not only uh, I've actually opened the group up to uh, anybody who needs a listening ear um, because uh, you know and MS uh, does as you uh, mentioned on, on multiple occasions about mental health. Uh, MS does have a mental health aspect and uh, it does have a very high suicide rate. Yeah, and uh, th that mental health, uh, well, it's a conversation, like you say, that you know, <laughs> it happens regularly here on the show. It happens regularly when uh, we're out talking to our friends. Um, what sort of what sort of things did you need to overcome, or do you still uh, deal with mental health-wise? Um, actually, um, I've not really had any problems with mental health. Um, uh, in the beginning, I did. But I learned, um, I don't, I honestly, I can't remember how I learned to overcome it, but um, you just have to, with that mask, keep pushing forward, keep a stiff upper lip. <laughs> well, you certainly know how to do that, my friend. Um, you've got a lot of uh, friends and family around you, though, too, that the uh, family's a, a big support network for you, right? And yeah, and uh, family is very important to me, and um uh, all my close friends, um, yourself included. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a, all about family and friends. Yeah. And have you always been close to your family like that? We're very close. Um, very close to all my, all my siblings, my brother, Daryl, John, Shirley, and Doris, um, and my mother. Uh, yeah. We're all very close, and we all live close together. Um, John's maybe five minutes away from my house. Oh, wow. Is that a good thing? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it is because he's working a lot, and he's always out of town. Yeah. I went so, to public school with John, if you recall. Yeah. Yeah, so we've known each other quite a while. That's why I could make a joke about that. Um did you have to, uh, you know, uh, you and I have talked to before about when, when you're out and about and people see you, uh, you're, you're not looking for any sympathy, are you? Uh, no, I'm not looking for sympathy. Um, sure. It's, a, it's appreciated, but it's to me, it's not necessary. So, yeah. So uh, what kind of things do you do in these days to, uh, I mean, you, you're keeping yourself busy with this live streaming and you're, you're public speaking, but uh, um, you, you have children as well, don't you? Yes, I have uh, two children of my own, four stepchildren, and two, two um, step-grandchildren. So wow. uh, I get called Papa when they come into the house, and it's, there's no feeling like it. Yeah. Now, when this, uh, obviously... Uh, how how did this first affect the how did this affect family and, and your children uh when it came about uh, when it came about um and uh, like for myself it was a learning curve um you know it's um they all accepted me uh, accepted what multiple sclerosis was and uh, we did have a family friend who uh, had multiple MS uh, for numerous years, and uh, he's long since passed, but he lived a long life, and um, um, 
they, uh, my family, like I said, they just want to uh, try to learn what I know. And uh, there's yeah. always something more to learn, but there's still so many unknowns. Yeah. And how old are you now, Dom? Uh, 42 turning 43. Yeah. You're beating a lot of the odds already. Yeah. Yes, I have. Um, and another thing I do to keep myself busy is uh, trying to uh, relearn French. I'm trying to learn Portuguese. Uh, trying to learn some Spanish because um, I do have family in Portugal. And right. I do have Portuguese friends and Spanish friends and French friends. So um, I just try to, try to keep my mind busy. Yeah, well, exercise the mind, right? Yeah, well, exercise and MS is key. Um, if you uh, don't use it, uh, that's not just a statement. That's a fact. You'll lose it. Yeah. Well, you keep using it all the time. You even, you even come out and sing some karaoke once in a while when, you, when you're up for it. Oh, I love karaoke. You know that. I've been doing that with you for over 20 years. That's how we met, right? Was it through the exactly? Yeah, uh, I think I was about uh, maybe 18, 19. Well, you would have been at least 19, right? Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you're, you're doing really well, Dom. And there's so many of us that are, are really proud of you, and you're, you're, you're inspiring to a lot of people, whether you realize it or not. Um, and and the education that you've given yourself because you, you, you well, you exercise the mind by doing lots of reading. Um, MS was discovered back in 1868. Is that right? That is correct. It was uh, discovered by a French neurologist named Jean-Martin Chacot uh, in 1868. And um, nobody really knows actually how long MS has actually been around. But 1868, that's 151 years. That's a long time. <laughs> Yeah, that it is. And there's different types of uh, MS, right? I think a lot of people just think MS and it just... Yeah, there is different types of MS. Um, usually when you first get diagnosed, it's uh, relapsing remitting MS. Uh, what that type of MS does is it, uh, um, it starts to slowly debilitate you. You can have an attack uh, and then get better. Um, and then there's secondary progressive, um, same thing. Um, it, when a, an attack, attack happens, uh, you do have a period where you can heal a bit, but you may not get back, uh, what, um, the MS itself may have uh, taken. And then there's primary progressive, which I have. Uh, I was uh, un unfortunate. I was diagnosed uh, right off the bat with primary progressive. Um, and then there's progressive relapsing MS. And the last two mentioned uh, are uh, very rare. Well, you've done so well again uh, starting this group and uh you know you're doing some public speaking i know um uh the live streaming is great as well you've got some other uh, speaking events coming up that you want to tell everybody about uh yes uh coming up uh on the 28th of april is the uh annual uh, ms walk at the uh, point Edward arena um i'm not quite sure the time i'd have to get a hold of wendy anderson at uh the MS Society, I'll be speaking for about three, four minutes just uh, at the beginning. Uh, and then the walk will uh, go on. Uh, if, it, if weather permitting, then uh, I'll join the walk myself. There you go. And you're going to get a chance to talk after the walk. Is that before the walk or after uh, the walk? It's, it's before the walk. Before. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so Give me that information. We'll be sure to share it around with all our viewers and uh, let them know, and we'll, we'll see how many people we can get out help get out there for you. Oh, that'd be uh, excellent. I'd appreciate that. Right on. Well, Dom, thank you so much. I don't I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I do appreciate you uh, giving me your time here today. And I'm looking forward, of course, as a, a fellow live streamer, I'm I'm always excited to see what you're 
uh, going to do. And, and uh, I know you got a few ideas in your head about this live streaming. So you just keep yes. going, buddy, and, and uh, it's, it's just going to keep growing for you. Well, I thank you for having me on the show today. Anytime. You know what? I think we should make you uh, 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 once or every couple of months regular on the show just to give us updates on what's happening uh, with MS and, and we can help spread the word at our end too. For sure. And I'm definitely going to try that uh, Be Live uh, TV. Yeah. Uh, do that. And uh, let me know if you need some help with that. I'll come over and see you. All right. Sounds great. Okay, Dom. Thank you so much, my friend. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it's my friend Domingos or Dom. I, I have a hard time calling him Domingos because I always called him Dom. So uh, Dom Fernandez uh, battling MSS or MS for close to 17 years. Uh, real no quit attitude, positive uh, mindset. And like he says, you, you got to exercise the mind. If you don't, you'll, if you, yeah, you'll lose it. <laughs> if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And uh, he's definitely, he just keeps going. I, 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 I think about him often, honestly, and, and uh, every time I see him, I'm, I'm just amazed. So way to go, Dom. You can check him out there uh, on Facebook and his group called Talking MS. He welcomes anybody to stop by and ask questions or if you just want a listening ear, even if it's not about MS, he understands uh, people just needing somebody to talk to and listen to, and he'll be there. Uh, and you can share the word of Talking MS if you know somebody who has MS uh, go visit them and share the link around as well. All right. Well, uh, that's all the time I got for you this week, but I do thank you all very much for being here. So uh, have a great week and an even better weekend. And I will see you next time right here on the show. Bye for now. <laughs>